The Nacon Revolution Unlimited Pro is hands down one of the best Pro controllers I've ever purchased. This special edition version was released with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and I've been using it for about 3 or 4 weeks now and it's time to give you some thoughts on its features and my experience so far in case you're thinking about picking one up for yourself. So everything comes in the included rugged storage case. The controller is covered in a matte soft touch grip coating which is actually very well built. Inside the case you also get a microfiber cloth, the Bluetooth wireless adapter, a very handy container holding all the additional weights, heads and shafts. And finally, you get the 3 meter USB A to USB C charging cable. But before we dive into the accessories, I just have to talk about that beautiful design first. The color combination and the choice of graphics they went with makes it very pleasant to look at, in my opinion at least. And I also love all the hidden details that they've added on there to make it extra unique to the franchise. Even the triggers and almost all the buttons have a patterned gunmetal color. One thing that may not be as popular is the sticks layout as it is in the Xbox offset style which I personally prefer that way and I feel like it's better in ergonomics but I'll be interested to know what everybody thinks about that in the comments down below as I know that there are a lot of people who prefer the DualShock stick style. The back of the controller has a textured kind of diamond shape grip surface which again very high quality. Right so going back to all the extras you get and really what we need to talk about is that little container with all the extra parts but before I forget this classified document came along with the controller which contains a small code for some in-game extras which I'm not quite sure what it is actually but if you're still playing Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War please feel free to claim it. So what you get is additional weights that can be added to a concealed compartment in the back of the controller which easily comes apart with a small tug allowing you to adjust the controller's weight to your liking. You also get the interchangeable joystick heads that lets you use a convex rubber cap instead of the default concave which in my opinion is the best option as it offers a better grip. Now the adjustable tilt system provided with those rings that go around the base of your thumbstick allows you to switch between 30, 38 and 46 degrees which basically limits your max range of motion in game. So that could actually be very handy with some games but just remember that you will need to correct the response curve in its software section which we'll go over in a moment otherwise those anti-friction rings are one of the best I've ever seen. So compared to the PlayStation DualShock or even the DualSense for that matter, the face buttons and the D-pad are soft pressed so they feel very similar to what you're used to in the standard Sony controllers. My only complaint I guess and I'm probably just being too fussy is that you cannot remotely power your console using this controller which is the case in Astro and Scuf controllers as well so I haven't seen any third party controllers that are able to remotely power your console so it's very familiar in third party controllers but I'm still hoping that they would find a way to integrate it in future versions. When it comes to the triggers, again, it feels very familiar to what you used to see in, on the standard controllers. The shoulder buttons, however, are not soft pressed. They are nice and clicky, which is the way I prefer it. And I've seen a lot of people saying that they've had problems with it not registering when you press the top. I think that was in the older version before this one. So hopefully Nacon addressed that issue with this controller. I haven't had any problems with it so far. And since this is a pro controller, of course you get the four extra mappable inputs on the back. 
those buttons are running to the length of the legs of the controller and I'm going to be honest, I haven't used them that much, but I can definitely tell that they are not pronounced enough. Then you have the inputs with the profile button to switch between four different profile presets that come with the controller, or of course you can use the software and create your own. Underneath it you've got the 3.5mm audio jack with a mute button and volume controls. Then when it comes to the software, it's very straightforward, very easy to use, and you've got all the bells and whistles there, so you have full control over remappings, vibration model intensity, dead zone calibrations, thumbstick and trigger response curves, D-pad options, everything you can think of basically will be on there. Of course, you can set all the different profiles on there as well. And again, as I mentioned, it's not complicated to use, very straightforward. You don't really need a guide to show you how to use it. You just get on there and everything is pretty much self-explained. The one thing that might be slightly confusing, and I thought I'd mention it here just in case, is when you go into the general settings to change the RGB light ring. So you've got some options on the top there to be able to change between, you know, static light or a pulsing light, for example. But most importantly, if you do want to change the colors of the ring itself, you will have to press on the color itself to be able to change it. I found that slightly confusing to start with, but you've got four corners there and you can choose one color for each corner and that will then show up directly on the controller so you can see how it looks on the controller itself. Now, let's talk about compatibility and of course when that controller first came out, it was aimed for PC players and PlayStation 4. However, I have tested it with other consoles. It can work on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I haven't tested that yet, but I have seen videos for other people doing it. It does require a bit of a setup though, so heads up on that. What I have done though, I've tested it with my PlayStation 5 as you can see there, and it does work. Of course, if you try and play a PlayStation 5 game on it, it will give you the dreaded message of this controller is not compatible because it has to be the DualSense to play PlayStation 5 games. I'm not 100% sure if Sony is going to update that in the future and allow third-party controllers to, to play PlayStation 5 games. Let's hope that that will be the case. But you can play PlayStation 4 games on your PlayStation 5 console using this controller, so at least you can still use it to some extent on your PlayStation 5. Right, so overall the controller looks amazing, it's very comfortable to hold, there's a lot of really good features like the fact that you get all the pre-programmed custom presets without having to connect it to a PC, and of course if you do have a PC there is included software that is very easy to use and gives you a ton of extra customization options. And you have compatibility with both PC, PlayStation 4 and now PlayStation 5 as well. The wireless system works perfect with no latency issues and you get a seven hour battery for wireless use and you can even take that further if you're willing to turn off the front RGB ring. So I think it's safe to say that I'm definitely recommending this controller and by the way this is based purely on my personal opinion. There's no sponsorship or anything like that involved. And of course I'm not saying that it's perfect, this is just my own opinion. There are things that other people might find annoying or even there might be problems with other units that I haven't seen or things that I haven't discovered yet. But so far my experience has been really positive and the fact that there are a lot of good things to say about the controllers versus very slight things that might be concerning makes it easy for me to recommend it. But that's it for this video, please do let me know if you'd like me to review any other Elite or Pro controllers. Otherwise, as always, thank you very much for watching. Until next time.